Nabina Muhammad wa Ali wa sahbi ajma'in. We are in section 5.1, chapter 5. Chapter 5 is about trigonometric functions. And uh, let us start section 5.1, which is a very important introduction to uh, the trigonometric functions. We need first to talk about angles and radian major. So there are certain objectives in this section. Let us start by the first objective, which is recognize and use the vocabulary of angles. So let us start by the definition of angle. What is the definition? What is an angle? So an angle is formed by two rays. So this is a ray from the point B. It passes by A and it continues. It has only one end point. The end point is B. And another ray from B to C. Okay. So an angle is formed by two rays, BA and BC, that have a common end point. So B is the common end point, and we call it the vertex of the angle. The two rays, one of them, is called the initial side, which is BA, because this is here the arrow. Theta is the angle, and it goes from BA to BC in this direction, in counter-clockwise direction. This is counter-clockwise direction. So this side is called the initial side, and this side is called the terminal side, and the common end point is called the vertex. So this is the definition of the vertex. Now, we will concentrate and we will deal with angles in standard positions. So you need to understand what is the meaning of standard position. There are two points in the standard position. The vertex is at the origin. So we have a coordinate system like this, X and Y and the vertex is at the origin. The vertex is at the origin. Okay, so we understand the vertex should be at the origin in the standard position. What else? The initial side lies along the positive x-axis. So the initial side of the angle should lie along the positive x-axis. So this is the initial side and this is the vertex. What about the terminal side? The terminal side could be anywhere. So two conditions, the initial side should be, should lie on the positive X axis and the vertex is at the origin. If you go counterclockwise direction, like alpha, this is the angle alpha. If you go counterclockwise direction, then alpha would be positive angle. And here the terminal side lies in quadrant two so alpha lies in quadrant two because always the initial side would lie on the positive x-axis while theta here is negative because the initial side lies on the positive x-axis and we go clockwise direction this direction clockwise direction so if we go clockwise direction the angle would be negative to be in a standard position, the vertex should be at the origin. The initial side should be uh, on the positive x-axis. The terminal side could be anywhere. Here it is in quadrant three. So theta is an angle which lies in quadrant three, negative angle. Alpha is a positive angle that lie in quadrant two. So if you go Counterclockwise, we will get positive angles. If it is clockwise rotation, we will get negative angles. So angles in standard position could be positive or negative. Okay, another definition. What, what if the terminal side of an angle does not lie in a quadrant? It is not in a quadrant like here, but it lies 
on the x axis itself or the y axis itself in this case we will call this angle a quadrantal angle so the angle beta is a quadrantal angle and of course it's in standard position because the vertex is at the origin and the initial side lies on the positive x-axis and it is a positive angle here because it goes counterclockwise direction some exercises some examples true or false when an angle is in standard position its initial side is along the positive y-axis of course this is false it should be along the positive x-axis not the y-axis according to the definition the definition of the standard position to rule false when an angle in a standard is in a standard position its vertex lies in quadrant one this is not correct this is false if it is in a standard position its vertex should be at the origin so the vertex should be at the origin not in quadrant one okay fill in the blank to make a true statement if the terminal side of an angle in standard position lies on the x-axis or the y-axis what do we call the angle according to the definition here this is the definition of the quadrantal angle fill in the blank a negative angle is generated by how do we find the negative angle clockwise rotation clockwise rotation okay objective two so in objective one we learned what did we learn uh, the definition of an angle when the angle would be in a standard position and the definition of a quadrantal angle and when the angle is positive or negative all right objective two use degree measure how do we measure angles we measure angles by degrees we could measure angles by degrees so this angle theta is less than 90 degrees when an angle is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees we call it acute angle so this is an acute angle right angle is a, a 90 degrees angle any 90 degrees angle is called right angle it is 1 over 4 rotation we have a full rotation like this this is a full rotation 90 degrees 1 over 4 rotation obtuse angle is an angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees so it's greater than right angle okay straight angle is 180 degrees the initial side lies on the positive x-axis always so 180 degrees it's half rotation straight angle is 180 degrees so these are uh, this is the classifying angles by their degree measurements you need to know the names of these angles so let us take some examples fill in the blank an angle that's formed by half of a complete rotation if you go back here half rotation is a straight angle measures what measures 180 degrees and is called a straight angle an angle that's formed by one over four of a complete rotation measures 90 degrees so a complete rotation is 360 degrees and is called a right angle so 90 degrees is a right angle some exercises from the book the measure of an angle is given this is the measure of the angle 
classify the angle as acute right obtuse or straight 177 degrees less than 180 degrees and greater than 90 degrees so this is an obtuse angle okay 83 degrees this is less than 90 so it is acute angle pi and you notice that there is no degree so this is not pi degrees this is pi without writing anything if he doesn't write the small circle it means this angle is measured in radian so this is pi radian and we will know that we will learn here that pi radian is actually equal to, equal to 180 degrees so pi radian is 180 degrees so this is in fact a straight angle so in objective two we just learned classifying how to classify angles as acute right obtuse or straight angle okay let us go objective three now in objective two we used degree major in objective three we use radian major what is the definition of the radian what do we mean by one radian okay we it is the major of the central angle what is a central angle it is any angle with vertex at the center of the circle so this is the center of the circle and the vertex of the angle is at the center so this angle is called central angle now any central angle intercepts an arc this this is the arc intercepted by this angle intercepts an arc this is the arc uh, now if the length of this arc which is r if the length of this arc is r and the radius of the circle is also r which means if the if the length of the arc equals to the radius then the measure of this angle would be one radian radian so this is the measure of this angle is one radian if i ask you uh, what would what is the measure of this angle in degrees so you can notice and it's an acute angle less than 90 okay and somehow greater than 45 degrees so one one radian is greater than 45 degrees so that's the definition of the radian you have to have a central angle vertex at the origin of a circle now this angle will intercept an arc the length of the arc should equal the length the radius of the circle if you can graph an angle like this then the angle would have one radian as a major now if the length of the arc intercepted by the angle beta is 2r this is one radius 1r and this is another r so what would be the major of beta in this case it would be two radian two radians if gamma is an angle central angle that intercepts an arc and this arc the length of this arc is 3r equals to 3 radius then the major of this angle would be 3 radian so you can see in 3 rad radian equals uh, almost 180 degrees yani straight angle 180 but this is 175 something like this okay so this is the angle uh, this is the radian major so what is the definition between the length of this arc which is s let us call it s so what is s the length of the arc small s and r small r is the radius and theta is the angle measured in radian theta is the angle measured in radian 
So theta would be equal to S over R. S over R. Here, S was 2R. Okay, then here, theta or beta equals 2R over R. So it is 2. And here, gamma is equal to S. And S is 3R over R. So R cancels with R and you get 3. So the measure of gamma is 3 radian. So whenever you need to find the measure of theta in radian, you divide S by R. Okay. So this is how to measure theta in radian. S over R. Let us take this example. A central angle theta in a circle of radius 6. So R is 6 inches. Intercepts an arc of length 15 inches. So what is the 15 inches? It is small s. It is the length, the arc length of the or the length of the arc. 15 inches. What is the question? What is the radian measure of theta? So this, this theta, what is the radian measure of theta? Okay, we use the formula. Theta equals S over R. S 15 inches, R 6 inches. Inches, inches cancels with inches. And we get 2.5 radian. So the measure of theta is 2.5 radians. Uh, another example, central angle theta, radius 12. So R is 12 intercepts an arc of length 42. So S, small s is 42. The question, what is the radian measure of theta? So theta is S over R. S is 42 feet. And R is 12 feet. Feet cancels with feet. And we get 3.5 radian. So theta here, measures 3.5 radian. Please solve this example it's similar to the exercise and solve also exercise seven. Uh, these two are similar. You use this formula, theta equals S over R. So in objective three, we learned the definition of the radian measure and how to find the radian measure of theta we divide S by R. This is objective three. Now, objective four, we have two measures now for an angle. We can measure angle by degrees and we can measure angle by radians. Okay, can we convert? How to convert between degrees and radians? Okay, how to change degrees to radians and radians to degrees? Let us see. Let us find the relation between degrees and radians. This is one rotation. This is one rotation. If we talk about the arc, the length of the arc intercepted by this angle, which measures one rotation, then the arc, the length of the arc would be the circumference of the circle. The circumference of the circle is two pi r. So this is S. So theta, the measure of theta, S over R, 2 pi R over R, R cancels with R, and it is 2 pi. So one complete rotation equals 2 pi radians. And one complete rotation has 360 degrees. So 360 degrees equals to 2 pi radians. Or if you divide by 2, 180 degrees equals pi radians. So pi over two radians would be equal to 90 degrees because pi is 180. Pi over four radians would be equal to 180 over four, which is 45 degrees. Pi over three radians would be equal to 180 over 3, 60 degrees. Pi over 6 radians 
would be 180 degrees over 6, it would be 30 degrees. These are the most important angles we will deal with in this section, uh, in this section. So please try to remember that pi over 2 is 90 degrees, pi over 4 is 45 degrees, pi over 3 is 60 degrees, pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Now, how to convert? Well, to convert degrees to radians, we multiply degrees by pi over 180. We need to convert to radians. When you convert to radians, the radians would be in the numerator. Okay? When you convert radians to degrees, degrees would be in the numerator. numerator. So you multiply by 180 degrees over by radians. Let us solve this example. The question, convert in angles in degrees to radians. So convert degrees to radians. So we multiply by pi over 180. So this is 30 degrees, multiply by pi over 180. You cancel degree circle, small circle with small circle. So degree cancels with degree. And we have 30 times pi, 30 pi over 180 radians. If you use the calculator, 30 over 180 would be one over six. So 30 degrees is pi over six radians. So pi over six radians is 30 degrees. What about 90 degrees? Same method. You will find that 90 degrees is pi over two radians. What about negative one, 305 degrees? Convert to radian, so multiply by pi over 180. Cancel degree with degree. Use the calculator to divide 135 over 180. Write the answer negative three pi over four radians. So negative one, three, five degrees equal to negative three pi over four radians. Let me, for example, uh, do part C for you. Please do part A and B. So part C, negative 300 degrees. I need to convert to radian. So I will multiply by pi radian over 180 degrees cancel degrees with degrees and use the calculator divide 300 over 180 you get 5 over 3 so the answer is negative 5 pi over 3 radian so negative 300 degrees equals to negative 5 pi over 3 radian of course, if you want to find this as a number, you can use the calculator, okay? You can multiply, but you can replace pi by 3.14, or you can use pi in the calculator, okay? And find it as a number. Okay, how to convert to degrees? Now we have radians, and we want to convert them to degrees, okay? So pi over three, radians. Now to convert to degrees, you multiply by 180 degrees over pi radians and you cancel radians with radians. This is important and you can cancel radians with radians, pi with pi and the answer would be 180 over 3, 60 degrees. So pi over 3 radians equals 60 degrees. You can do that also. Uh, in part B. Look to part C. I have one radian. Okay, there is no pi here. It is one radian only. Okay, how to convert to degrees? You multiply by 180 degrees over by radians. You cancel radian with radian and you have 180 degrees over by. Okay, this is in degrees. If you want to find it, uh, approximate, Divide 180 by 3.14 pi in the calculator. The answer would be 57.3. So one radian 
equals 57.3 degrees. So you can say in one radian is approximately 57 degrees. Okay, put this in your mind. What about 2.3 radians? The same, same as part C. Let me solve here, for example, part D for you, and please do the other uh, parts. I need to change negative 4.7 radian to degrees. So I multiply by 180 degrees over pi radian. Now, the radian cancels with radian, and the answer would be, you can multiply 4.7 using the calculator, 4.7 times 180 divided by, uh, leave it as pi, okay, I will leave it as pi. So the answer would be negative 800, 46 divided by, by pi degree, okay? This would be the angle. If you want to approximate, you can divide uh, this by pi, and the answer would be negative 269 degrees, point, uh, three, if you like. This would be the answer. Uh, pay attention to this question. One radian is approximately 57 degrees. So radian is much larger than one degree. One radian is much larger than one degree. Uh, please solve these questions, convert here. Uh, uh, pay attention, convert to radians. Express your answer as a multiple of pi. So leave your answer as a multiple of pi, okay? Here, convert to degrees. So you multiply by 180 degrees over pi radian, and you cancel pi with pi and radian with radian, and you write the answer. Here, convert to radians, round to two decimal places. Okay, so this is 18 degrees. Uh, to, to convert to radians, I multiply by pi radian over 180 degrees. Okay, cancel degree with degree and divide 18 by 180 by the calculator. You get pi over 10. Pi over 10 radian. But he says round to two decimal places. So you divide pi in the calculator by 10, you get 0.314, okay? To two decimal places, 0.31. Because after one, you have four, so the answer would be 0.31 radian. So 18 degrees, of course, it is less than one radian because we know that one radian approximately uh, 57 degrees. Here, convert to degrees, round to two decimal places, okay? And round to two decimal places. Uh, I will stop here. Uh, uh, we finished objective four, and inshallah, next time, we will talk about other uh, objectives in section 